Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you are doing well. It's time for our weekly track roundup, where I go over what I felt were the worst and the best tracks of the week. You know what it is. That's what we do here. All the songs are linked down below. I want to get through a few shout outs before I get deep into these tracks. Number one, our Patreon page linked down below. Head over there, gain access to some monthly exclusive content, support the channel in the process. Two, the vinyl charity compilation that features many artists over the years that uh, we reviewed on the channel that I've been talking about, that I've been promoting, that I've been telling you guys to uh, pick up because proceeds go toward the Immigrant Legal Resource Center. I have a copy of it right here. They're real. Oh my God. And they're available for a limited time only. Okay, we have a, a second batch on pre-order. And once we move through that, we will put out another batch for pre-order. Uh, we're far more than halfway done with this pre-order batch. But this thing is looking good as a motherfucker. I haven't even opened it yet. <clears throat> but again, link to this compilation down below. Features the likes of Open Mike Eagle, Pilefia, Hiram Namiri, Zeal and Ardor, Oxbow. We have Austin on there. Street Sects with Lingua Ignata or Ignota. And uh, Nick Sadler of Daughters fame, Shoo Shoo, Cult Crimes, HMLTD, Mark Kozilek, Igloo Ghost, Chong the Nomad with Stas the Boss, Uncommon NASA, Cal Chesta is on here too. The whole gang is here, y'all. The whole gang is here, and it's half black, half yellow. All right, so if you want to get, get your hands on this exclusive, well, not, not so much exclusive, but a, a limited edition vinyl compilation going to charity that um, features all sorts of uh, exclusives and, and exclusives and rarities from artists that we've covered over the years, pick it up, link down below. <coughs> okay, let's get into these tracks. Also, of course, down below is our Amazon and Turntable Lab Associate links. And uh, one final shout out, Carly Rae Jepsen covering No Doubt and for some Spotify singles, that's linked down below too. All right, worst tracks this week. The worst tracks, the worst track is, the worst tracks are no tracks. No tracks. There were literally no tracks I heard this week that I hated. You know, maybe I wasn't digging hard enough. You know, th there was like a really weird uh, Jesus and Mary chain cover by David Hasselhoff, but I don't give a shit. I really don't care. Uh, and, and maybe it turned out okay. I have no clue. But uh, r really, uh, of, of all the music I listened to all week, and I listened to a lot of music this week, I, I didn't hear anything I hated, you know? D didn't really hear anything that I thought I needed to talk about that, that was all that bad. So, yeah, just no terrible tracks this week, no worse tracks this week. What are you going to do? Dodge the bullet. Maybe some of y'all come here for the negativity, but hey, it's, uh, it's, it's fine with me if, uh, if I enjoy and sort of feel somewhat neutral on most of the tracks this week or rather all of the tracks this week. All right, first off, full-length review of this track, new Travis Scott on the Fantano channel, highest in the room, thought it was okay. Pretty standard by Travis Scott, you know, standards. Um, nothing too impressive about his flows, his vocals. The ending, uh, instrumentally, was amazing. The way it was ascending it would be really cool to hear what this builds up into. Uh, but I think the song could have used a switch up, could have used a feature, could have used a little extra something, truly and honestly. Um, I mean, I, I guess it's cool that it sounds like Travis is sticking to his typically psychedelic sound, but I want to hear him innovate on that. I want to hear him build, you know, like he did on Astroworld. I want to hear him build. This does not sound like a, a build to me, but uh, it was decent. It was okay. It was all right. Uh, we also have Slater Kinney. They're back. Non-album track, non-album single, Animal. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bit of an afterthought post their very uh, underwhelming new LP. And truly and honestly, uh, while I'm not blown away by this track, there are some parts where I think the vocals could have been better. It's actually, uh, it's actually quite better than um, uh, a lot of the material off the new LP. Rocks pretty hard. Rocks pretty hard. Uh, we also have a new, a new track from Remo Drive, an extended version of their latest LP that I found very underwhelming. Uh, they have a new track out that uh, I guess is going to be released along with this. And this version of the LP, <coughs> uh, 
I guess, uh, again, extended a few extra tracks, and this song that has made it onto the extended version uh, is a bit more gutsier than I think a bulk of the material that has been on the last Remo Drive record. I mean, again, it's it's not like uh, uh, anything as awesome as like their big breakout record they dropped a little while ago, but uh, but still, you know, it seems like a bit of an improvement. Hopefully they put out more music that has just uh, this level of bite in the future, I guess. Uh, we also have King Princess, who has dropped this amazing tune over here, somewhat amazing. I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed by some aspects of it, but I'm loving the fact that it's um, uh, just about sex from a very submissive perspective. That alone makes it a pretty interesting listen. Hit the back is the name of this one. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I mean, if, if this is, uh, I don't know if, 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 uh, if, if you're the subtype, you know, you, you, you like a nice Dom daddy, uh, this, this might be your jam. This could be your anthem. This could be your anthem. Uh, we also have Bandit, new track from Juice World, also featuring a young boy never broke again on this one. I think Juice World's flows, his vocals, the melody on this track and the instrumental are great. Uh, a lot of Juice World similes are, are bad. They are not good. And Young Boy had nowhere near as much finesse on the beat um, as Juice World does. Juice World sounds smooth over fucking instrumental. Young Boy sounds awkward. I, I do not uh, see the appeal of him appearing on this song, frankly. Uh, kind of ruined it. You know, I, I think kneecapped the potential. Um, eh, not considering, you know, how mediocre some of the writing is, though. Uh, we also have this new track from Gucci Mane. Megan the Stallion, Big Booty. Uh, Gucci Mane clearly had had me in mind when he wrote this track, uh, writing a song about one of my favorite things on the planet. But uh, uh, what I do not love is that Gucci Mane's delivery on this track is so goddamn monotone in one note. Like, what the fuck? You're you're writing a song and rapping about one of the most beautiful things in the world. Please be a little more enthusiastic. Uh, Megan, of course, killed it. Like the instrumental, uh, thought some of the shouty refrains about big booties are really funny uh the track is playful it's tongue-in-cheek but i i think gucci Mane could have done a bit more to kind of um i don't know yuck it up a bit more just uh again be a bit more enthusiastic make the track feel as as fun as it's trying to be <clears throat> we also have this new track from guap dad 4000 who, who admittedly i haven't i haven't talked about too much up until this point i'm sorry about that but still uh, dude has this new cutout with chance the rapper it's not bad it's a cool pop rap r&b blend and uh, chance's verse isn't too bad so uh digging it it's not bad uh we also have ed o'brien of Radiohead fame, who is uh, uh, making his entrance into some solo work with a new track out that is a, a somewhat abstract, impressionistic, ambient piece with some really cool sounds. I mean, I'm not crazy about the uh, composition of it, but still, I uh, thought texturally it was pretty interesting. Link down below. Uh, we also have Three Tiers, Danny Brown, Run the Jewels. On production, we have JPEG Mafia, awesome instrumental. Uh, kickoff first from Danny was pretty cool. Uh, Run the Jewels, pretty much standard. <clears throat> in terms of their performance here. I wish uh, the track was a bit more all guns blazing, you know, but uh, I am looking forward to reviewing this new Danny record. You know, I, I am waiting to see if this track grows on me a little bit more in the context of the album. Uh, very little of this record in terms of like the teaser tracks have like really floored me, but uh, Danny is, is sometimes uh, can be more of a grower than a shower. And uh, we will see, we will see. Uh, we also have this new track over here from Churches, which isn't too bad, certainly better than uh, some of the more gussied up stuff they've been releasing as of late. And the Chromatics are making their return this week. New album out. Not sure if I'm going to cover it in a full length review just as of right now. Uh, it's a little up in the air, but uh, I, I will say that I think think the material I'm hearing from it so far is slightly more interesting than their last record, but overall their aesthetic and very faint, dreamy performance and songwriting styles is, is still not really my thing, uh, truly and honestly. But uh, if you love if you love somewhat dark, moody, dreamy pop music, that's a little cinematic. Give it a shot. Give it a try. This new one over here that has been turning heads is the track You're No Good. Uh, we also have Buju Banton, Rastagat Soul new project and uh this song over here that i've been digging that he he really goes ham 
on this song. Like he is killing the instrumental, smothering it with his vocals. I'm, I'm a little uh, torn on it. I love how expressive his singing is, but simultaneously, I just wish um, uh, there was a bit more oomph uh, behind him to support uh, just how um, animated his his singing and uh, um, emotions are all over the track. Lend a Hand is the name of this one. It's pretty uh, inspiring and uh, uh, beautiful, straight from the heart. Uh, we have Ben Frost, experimental music artist Ben Frost. He is back, and this new song over here, a, a lot like the um, a lot like the Ed O'Brien song. I love what's going on texturally here. It's very odd. It's very left field. It's very uh, cinematic in a way, but simultaneously, I'm not crazy about the composition. I, I feel like it sounds like a bit of a mixed bag compositionally. I don't think there's a whole lot of flow or. Um, a whole lot in terms of uh, arrangements that are all that intriguing, but I love the noise. I love the sound, you know, uh, th uh that's not enough in most cases to, uh, kind of keep me there forever, but, uh, it's, it's certainly stimulating while it's on. I suppose the name of this new track over here is catastrophic de deliques deliquescence, deliquescence. And let's get into the tracks that I thought were the best ones this week, the best tracks this week, quite a few, quite a few. Uh, we have this new track over here, so happy Channel Trace is getting the recognition he deserves uh, because there were some really cool tracks off of his new EP, and uh, he's making some very smart and uh, somewhat fringy, I guess, uh, fusions of hip-hop and house. It's, it's cool. It's cool. And now he's come through with this uh, hip-house version of, of Earthquake, Tyler's Earthquake, and uh, that's awesome. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Sounds great. Good production, great grooves, great beat. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Shout out to Channel Trace. Keep doing your thing. Uh, we also have Sun over here who have been promoting a, another uh, album, kind, kind of like a record of afterthoughts from their uh, recent life metal. But from what I'm hearing so far, it sounds like it's produced just as well and just as intriguing. Uh, this new track over here, Frost C, is a bit more meditative than some of the stuff off of the last record but I am like I am liking the brighter textures on this one the brighter textures on this uh, on this track are are kind of what I would would have wanted out of many songs off of life metal uh, but still kicking ass sounded good uh, more Sun is better than less Sun it's been a long time since they've dropped a new full-length album so why not spoil us come on give it to me <clears throat> Poppy has come through. I disagree. New single, music video. Her deal with Sumerian Records uh, pretty much points in the direction of, yeah, she's going to drop a fucking metal album. And it is sounding good so far. The riffs are great. The choruses are super anthemic and sweet and poppy. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of loving the uh, fusion of new metal, of power metal, of pop metal. It's, it's, it's a very odd mix of sounds, but it works in such a... Uh, functional and a no duh kind of way that it, it doesn't uh, uh, come off as smart as it actually is. You know, it's just really direct, catchy, enjoyable, and, and ultimately that's what matters the most. Uh, we also have this track over here, Bad Baby Club Mix, Negative Gemini, very groovy, very spacious. If you love your dance music, dark, uh, a little moody, a little spacey, you love some crystal castles, you love some vapor wave, give it a try, give it a shot. Uh, we also have More Mother, an artist who I'm uh, just learning of now through this single, through this project that she has coming out via Don Giovanni Records. Uh, she's been at it for a while, though, so uh, uh, very unfortunate that I'm, I'm just stumbling across her stuff now. But still, I'm loving uh, her fusion of hip-hop and uh, noise and experimental music and plunder phonics. It's, it's really like... Um, it's, it's really a treat to hear all of these noises kind of brought together on such a visceral way. And, and what a um, what a commanding fucking voice. What a commanding voice. Uh, there's some industrial elements, too, I would say, as well. Um, After Images is the name of the track. Try it. It is badass as fuck. Uh, we also have Lightning Bolt, whose new song, Husker Don't. Not crazy about the title, but still, I'm liking the sound and the direction of this new track much more than the last track. Uh, this one over here is quite a bit of a change of pace for the duo, where they're almost writing like a, a pop punk song, but in their typical Lightning Bolt style with Brian Chippendale's kind of 
obscured, screamed, uh, somewhat brittle vocals and the those really grimy bass riffs and the frantic drums. But but it's it's quite poppy and it's quite direct. But it it's a long track and heads into um, some very heady winding passages toward the end that are really cool. So uh, give it a try. Give it a shot. Definitely one of the more ambitious tracks the duo has come out with in a while and certainly them getting out of their comfort zone and sounding pretty pretty damn good doing it. Uh, we also have Kim Petrus. She has a new project out, her second project that's that's basically a big Halloween celebration. Kim Petrus stands for Halloween. And uh, <laughs> this new track over here, Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, this new track over here is There Will Be Blood. And it is one of the better songs on this new record. I love that Kim is embracing more like um, uh, synthwave vibes on this record. Uh, slightly more, I guess, uh, dark wave vibes, but still a huge pop edge. It's 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 very, very subtle. Um, for the most part, the project doesn't sound as dark to my ears as I would like to. And a lot of the songs on this thing do sound incredibly rushed. But uh, no doubt this one, There Will Be Blood, is, is one of the best tracks on the entire record. It's a very fun pop song. It's a little creepy, a little ghoulish, uh, some morbid lyrics, uh, get you in the Halloween spirit. Give it a try. Give it a shot. And also want to give a shout out to over here, uh, Mr. Jacques Green, whose new song over here, For Love, is uh, really fantastic. Great piece of uh, very funky dance music that I'm going to be listening to until I hear his new project drop because it is tasteful. It is lovely. It is super groovy. Loving it. Sexy, sexy. Uh, GT, Greta, Greta Thunberg, climate activist. Her speech at the UN has now been covered in a death metal style. So <laughs> basically her, um, her, her speech, uh, just redone death metal vocals over just like some, some classic Swedish death metal vibes coming out of the instrumental. And, um, it's, it's actually, it's, it actually kind of kicks ass. And, um, uh, the riffs are pretty decent, and uh, it, it's funny. But uh, hey, listen to this thing. Uh, buy it. I, I guess it's available for streaming, but also sale. And uh, uh, proceeds go to a good cause. Proceeds go to a good cause. So it's it's a it's a charity song. It's a fun charity song. So a GT, GT. How dare you? Is the name of the track. <laughs> How dare you? Next song I want to point out is the track Bloom by a band named Great Grandpa uh, that I'm just now finding out about. What a great, great piece of pop rock this is. Like the vocals uh, like are really sharp. They're unique. The transition into the chorus is fantastic. Uh, it's engaging from front to back. A lot of personality. Uh, looking forward to hearing more uh, songs from this project. Um, again, first taste of this. Loving it so far. Curious, intrigued, I want to hear more. Try it out. It's fun. I uh, also want to give a shout out to Floating Points, who has come through with a great piece of very melty, heady, cerebral dance music here. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Floating Points. Hell fucking yes. Uh, also, Doja Cat. Bottom bitch. Doja Cat has come through with um, basically a summer jam at the start of fall. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what drove her to do that. Um, but, but here it is, uh, it's kind of twangy. There's some guitar in the background. She's it, maybe intentionally, maybe inadvertently kind of stepping into the emo rap ring on this one. I'm not going to call it emo trap because I don't think it's emo trap, but, uh, but primarily she is a singer and a rapper and she, she, she's kind of, she's kind of, she's kind of encroaching on that emo territory with the song and it sounded kind of good. And not that it's all that sad of a song. It's, it's more of, um, more of an instrumental aesthetic and a vibe to me that is, uh, uh, that's feeling that way. The attitude for the most part is uh, very flirty, very sensual, very playful, very tongue in cheek, a little bubbly, a little breezy, carefree. It's got a great hook to it. Um, it's a fun song. It's a fun track. I'm liking it. Liking that Doja Cat is really coming into her own and uh, doing some bold stuff that really reflects her personality. Last album I thought was just okay, uh, very faint, uh, very boring, not really showing her true eccentricity as an artist. Seems like she's uh, really finding out ways to flash that around uh, now, and, and it's sounding good. Also, Daniel Caesar, Cyanide Remix, Coffee 
on this one. Shout out to her. Fantastic that she's made it onto this track. I mean, that song is obviously a uh, uh, hugely reggae inspired, and it's amazing that she's uh, been able to pop onto the track and add her own flair to that. And uh, it's sounding good. She really enhances the song. So, uh, so awesome. Amazing. And uh, clipping. Oh, I, oh God. For whatever reason, I found this clipping song, the music video attached to it, particularly disturbing, uh, Blood on the Fang. It's an amazing track. David kills it on this song. And while the instrumental is not nearly as unorthodox as, uh, as a lot of clipping's classic stuff, uh, it is grimy as fuck. And I am starting to like that they're going into a more direct direction with this one. Um, you know, especially after the last record being like a weird, <laughs> like abstract hip hop story piece about an intergalactic slave ship, which is kind of still a mind fuck to me at that point. At this point, that that exists and that is a thing, uh, that we that we exist in a timeline where that is an album that is real. Uh, but still, <laughs> I'm loving the creepy, incredibly dark, unsettling vibes coming off of this track, and the music video really um is a, is again a mind fuck. Uh, wow. Big Thief over here. Come through with a great piece of angular and uh, very weird folk rock over here. Um, not sure if that is going to carry on into the rest of their new record because they're dropping two albums this year, which is a uh, pretty ambitious of them, but, uh, but still Big Thief loving the new track. Forgotten Eyes is the title and it's sounding really good. Also on Amanaguchi over here. Air Online, amazing fusion of rock and 8-bit and anthemic balladry. It's sounding fantastic. Anamanaguchi uh, with these two new singles are sounding better than ever. I'm hoping that uh, the fans uh, really pull together and, and build some hype for this thing because Anamanaguchi is sounding amazing. They're sounding amazing on these new tracks. They fucking bang. And that has been the weekly track roundup, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've got some good recommendations out of this video. Remember, all of the tracks I talked about are linked down below. All right, give them a shot, give them a try. Uh, one more time, Patreon link is down there below. And also, 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 don't forget that link to that vinyl, that exclusive, not exclusive, but limited edition. I keep saying exclusive, but I mean limited edition. Limited edition charity vinyl. Immigrant uh, Legal Resource Center. Lots of amazing artists on this thing. And uh, <clears throat> look, we're, look, we're, 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 we're going to make them as you guys pick them up, you know? So uh, I'm not trying to uh, uh, shove this in your face for any other reason that I think this is really cool. I think because of some of the artists that are on this, you would like this. I think you would like to have it. And finally, it, it goes to a good cause. So uh, that's it. That's it, y'all. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Anthony Fantano.